Hello everyone. Today we will set up SSO between two orgs, two Salesforce orgs, and we will also see the concept of just-in-time user provisioning. So uh, I have created two new Salesforce orgs. So uh, you can see in the domain that one is IDP and the second would be a service provider. So let's start setting up the SSO. So uh, first in the identity provider, we need to set up the uh, identity there by uh, going into the identity provider. Uh, click on enable identity provider. So yeah, so now uh, it has created a new self-signed certificate for me. So if you have a, an already existing certificate, you can use that or uh, by clicking on enable identity provider, it would automatically create a self-signed certificate. Click on save. It will show your warning and click OK. So now your Salesforce, uh, this org is, has been set up to be used as an identity provider. So now what we'll do is uh, we will click on download metadata. So now as you can see, it, the metadata has been downloaded. Now in your service provider org, you can see in the URL, uh, go to single sign up settings and uh, click on edit. Uh, check the SAML enabled checkbox. Now uh, in the SAML single sign in settings, uh, select new from metadata file then uh, the file the xml file which was downloaded select that click create so now you can see that we got the settings from our uh, uh, from our identity provider org so you can see that this is your uh, uh, issuer is your identity pro provider login url in the identity provider certificate what you can do is you can download the certificate from here Oh, I think the is locked. Uh, click on download certificate. You can see the certificate has been downloaded. Now, uh, in the choose file, select the self signed certificate and all the settings. I think uh, now I think we have uploaded the certificate and uh, let's uh, see one by one. So, this is the SAML identity type. So this basically means the when you log in from your identity provider, on what basis you want uh, Salesforce to uh, identify the user. So uh, do you want it for on the basis of Salesforce username, federation ID, or user ID? So right now let's do it for the federation ID. We will set up the federation ID, and by other than that we have got the identity provider login URL. So now. Uh, now, uh, as I told in the description, I'll we will just use the just-in-time user provisioning also. So uh, select this checkbox, and instead of standard, use our we'll use our custom uh, controller. Now click on uh, automatically create a SAML uh, 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 JIT handler class and execute handler as you can select your user, the admin user, and click on save. So now you can see that the settings has been set up and uh, uh, we would use this auto created reg handler class. So now our uh, single sign on settings has been set up. Now we'll go back to our identity provider or now uh, we'll create, create a connected app here. So for creating a connected app, just search for app manager and click on new connected app. Name it, uh, you can name it as SAML SSO GID and the contact email you can choose anything apart from that so here you'll see you have two options enable OAuth or enable SAML since this SSO is being used uh, using SAML we will click on the enable SAML checkbox now it's uh, uh, you can see it's asking for the entity ID uh, the entity ID you can get from the service provider or so copy this URL now it's asking for the ACS URL. So the ACS URL would be your, uh, you can see that the login URL. So this would be your ACS URL. Now in the subject type, since we have used the federation ID, so we'll match, match it using the federation ID. 
the issuer is your uh, uh, default uh, my domain name uh, the idp certificate we have, we have used the self signed certificate which we created and apart from that i think we don't need any other settings so just click on save now one important thing is uh, so for any uh, user to use this profile we need uh, uh, for any user to use this connected app we need to provide permissions and uh, in the profile section click on manage profiles and uh, select all the profile uh, profiles for, for, with the user who will use this connected app so i am selecting system administrator standard platform user and the standard user click on save so yeah i think we are good uh, from here mm, now let's go back to our service provider now as you can see we have created the custom jet handler so let me just tell you what basically is the just in time user provisioning so what happens is if we uh, there are there are two types of sso that is the federated and the delegated so with uh, federated sso in brief is a org wide sso so it would be enabled by default for all the users the delegated user is a profile level sso so you after implementing the delegated sso uh, only those users with the a single sign on permission would be able to use the sso so yeah these these are the difference between these two now in the federated federated sso we have the just in time user provisioning so uh, basically what this means is that in, uh, uh, it, it it will save you some time and uh, uh, you won't have to create the user in the uh, org which you want to uh, set up so instead of creating the user if just in time user provisioning is set up it will automatically create a user so now uh, since i have overridden and i will be using this custom class so uh, yeah let me just uh, click on edit so i have some predefined code let me just change this code and put in my code and then i'll explain you one by one so yeah now so let me just change the name of the apex class since i have uh, pasted the other class so now this is the global class uh, now let's go through the class so this is the class which got created automatically it's implementing the auth.saml jit handler interface now let's uh, go through the methods so uh, this uh, this uh, class would contain two uh, uh, three four methods so one important method is the create user the other is the handle user and then it would have the handle jit the handle account and last and handle contact and lastly the handle user so what would happen is first it would check whether the federation id is already present if the federation id is already present it won't create the user so uh, it would just log in otherwise it would call this create user method and uh, here it's uh, in the create user method it's calling the handle jit uh, so in the handle jit it's just providing the uh, user instance and other than that the uh, saml sso provider community id so uh, we are not setting up the community user so it's not important for our end so let's uh, go to the handle jit method so handle jit method is this so it's basically checking if the community id is null or not null then create a uh, community user so since you know that for community user we have to create a contact now since it's not a community user it will call the handle user so the handle user is this top one so the handle user uh, has the boolean create variable the user u and the map of string string attributes so basically uh, what what it's doing is it's checking if the attributes uh, this map contains the username if it contains then uh, then put that username in the uh, in in the instance user instance which we are passing and similarly it's setting up the federation id then it's setting up the email then it's setting up the first name or uh, uh, what we have done is like if the first name is not present then set up first name as someone and uh, the last name as Ahuja 
then it's just uh, setting up it's taking the information of the current logged in user and setting up the uh, la local language local time zone uh, etc then finally uh, yeah if if it's set, if it's uh, if our create variable is false then we'll up basically update it then uh, here we are uh, giving in the profile id like which profile you want to you want it to set up so for me let me just go to the profiles i want this user to have a standard user profile maybe so in the url you can see this is the standard user profile id so just copy that uh, from this uh, double zero e now go back to your apex class this is apex class so for uh, this tutorial i'm just hard coding the value and uh, in the real time you can get the value uh, in the attributes uh, map which you have got and then set up so I have got the standard user profile ID and then uh, it's setting up the role. Now finally it will return back to the create user method and it will return a user. So basically which would create the user in your org. So let's give it a try now. So before doing that, uh, let's go to my domain and enable our uh, SSO provider in the authentication configuration. Click on edit and enable this idp dot com click save now just copy paste this url or you can copy paste it from here my domain url now open new window now you'll see it will ask you to log in using your credentials or you can log in using this now I'll log in using IDP. So now, uh, so now what happens is basically, let me just log in with the user uh, to my IDP or so the user ID in my IDP was this. Let me just show you. Now we are in our identity provider or and i have created this user in my identity provider and this user is not present in my service provider you can see that now i'll log in with this user with this username and this user would be created in my service provider so let me go to another browser and this is my service provider link so let me log in with the identity provider sso so this is that now it's redirected me to add to the identity provider let me put in the username and password so it's asking me to put in the details to that And now you can see we are logged in into our service provider org. So yeah, let me just go back to the other browser and let me just refresh this page. And now you can see that the user has been created SSO widget. So I have appended a random character at the end. And the profile is this which you provided in the class so and the federation id is also there which is same as that in the identity provider so yeah so yeah that's all for this session thanks thanks everyone for watching till the end